Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dear students, today we are going to continue our series uh, talking about sympathomimetics. Uh, today we will discuss the catechol that means uh, reuptake, degradation, and interaction with uh, adrenergic receptors. Okay, first, uh, the termination. Okay, if you remember uh, from the previous lecture, uh, we during the we were talking about biosynthesis of catecholamines. We said at the end the catecholamine uh, mainly norepinephrine be released into the synapse. Okay, here the norepinephrine has either one of major three uh, pathways, either to uh, undergo reuptake into the presynaptic nerve terminal. And then this will be followed by uh, storage into the uh, presynaptic vesicle or inactivation by the enzyme uh, monoamine oxidase. The second pathway will be to uh, just diffuse into the circulation uh, with ultimate destruction in the liver and, and then renal elimination, as we'll discuss later. Uh, and then the third. Uh, uh, Pathway will be to undergo active transport into the post junctional cell. Okay, so this is called reuptake two. The first one is called reuptake one. It's passive, it goes along with the sodium transport, facilitated transport. This one is active transport into the, uh, ex the extra neuronal. This is neuronal site, this is extra neuronal site. Okay, the uh, post-junctional post uh, cell. Uh, and this is called uh, reuptake two or uptake two, uptake two, okay, and then it could uh, undergo enzymatic inactivation by catechol or methyl transferase. Again, we're gonna talk about it in about two slides. Okay, or the next slide, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, number one, uh, the uh, we, we talked about two enzymes, right? Uh, number one enzyme is MAO, okay? So MAO occurs within cells, bound to the cell, cell, surface membrane of mitochondria. It's abundant on these focus here, mainly in noradrenergic nerve terminal. It's maybe present also in other tissues such as liver and intestine. Uh, within the sympathetic neuron, it controls the content of dopamine and the norepinephrine. Uh, it can also oxidize other uh, monoamine such as dopamine and 5-hydroxytryptamine, also known as serotonin. Okay. It's inhibited by various drugs. Uh, they are called MAO inhibitors. These drugs are used for treatment of depression. The second enzyme is COMT, catechol o methyl transferase. Okay. So this drug is monoamine oxidase. It will do oxidation into the catecholamine, whereas catechol o methyl, please uh, pay attention, this is not ortho. It's O because it adds methyl group into the O, the oxygen. It's absent from other noradrenergic neurons. This one is mainly in noradrenergic neurons. This is absent from noradrenergic neurons. Okay, but it's present in the adrenal medulla and many other cells and tissues, including liver and kidney. It's responsible for most of the extra neuronal catabolism of catecholamines. So let us now go and see what happens. Okay, on the level of the metabolism of catecholamines using these two enzymes. Uh, please, number one, pay attention so that this is the adrenaline, this is the noradrenaline. Adrenaline also called epinephrine, it's also called norepinephrine. They are called the catecholamines because this nucleus is called the catechol. This benzene ring with two uh, hydroxyl group in the ortho position is called the catechol. catechol. Okay, uh, they may start with MAO first, then COMT, or COMT first and then MAO. Okay, MAO first, then COMT, or COMT first, with, uh, followed by MAO. Okay, same thing. Uh, either way, um, let us start with adrenaline. Okay, let's start with noradrenaline, sorry. So adrenaline does not have methyl group. Remember we said noradrenaline, we said the word, the prefix nor means demethylated. So noradrenaline, look here, it's a copy of noradrenaline except the absence of this methyl group. Look here, this is the only difference between them. So it's demethylated adrenaline. 
So this noradrenaline under the effect of MAO, it undergoes oxidative deamination. So this CH2, NH2, so deamination, I mean, will be removed. And uh, the carboxyl, the CH2 will be converted into COH. It will be carboxylic group. Okay, and this is called 3,4-dihydroxymandelic acid. Same thing happened with adrenaline also. Again, oxidative deamination, the whole thing will be removed, including the methyl group. Okay, and this CH2 will be oxidized to carboxylic group. Same thing, 3,4-dihydroxymandelic acid. Then under the effect of catechol or methyl group, okay, this is catechol. He will add methyl group to oxygen. Okay, here, so here, so you see the difference only the presence of uh, methyl link to the oxygen group in the benzene ring or in the catechol. The ring that was, this was catechol, right? Uh, this will lead to the formation of methoxyhydroxymandelic acid, also known as vanillyl mandelic acid. And this, this would be followed by conjugation to glucuronic acid or sulfate and then urinary excretion. Nor epinephrine or nor adrenaline. Okay, uh, if it starts with uh, COMT, okay, it will be converted into a metanephrine. This followed by MAO, okay, metanephrine. Again, the COMT again will add methyl group into the O uh, on the catechol. And then oxidative deamination will cause the formation of BMA. Uh, here also the adrenaline COMT first, again, we add, add uh, methyl group to the oxygen group uh, oxygen atom here and then followed by MAO. So this will lead to oxidative deamination, this removal of the uh, amine group with the methyl and oxidation of CH2 into switch. All of these will result in the formation of vanillyl mandelic acid, mandelic acid, followed by glucuronide and sulfate conjugation and urinary excretion. This vanillyl mandelic acid could be used for to trace the uh, effect of drugs uh, on um, tumors such as Pheochromocytoma, which is a tumor in the adrenal medulla that leads to the formation of more noradrenaline, severe hypertension. Uh, I think that's it for here. So now let us talk now about the adrenergic receptors. Adrenergic receptors. Okay. Uh, I'll just remind you, we for the sympathetic neuron, we have the presynaptic, uh, pre-ganglionic neuron that releases acetylcholine, okay, which works on nicotinic receptor. In ligand gate ion channel in sodium influx action potential action potential in the post ganglionic neuron there will be a release of norepinephrine which acts on alpha or beta receptor just this is a little reminder uh, so adrenergic neuron may work uh, may activate uh, only alpha beta or both if they activate both they will be non-selective of course agonists at adrenal receptors they are called direct sympathomimetics drugs that activate directly the the adrenal receptors. They mimic the action of the natural occurring, occurring catecholamine, non epinephrine, and it. Okay, examples. Uh, please, these names will be kind of a little bit repeated. So please remember, because names or pharmacology is very important. Uh, Pionylephrine is alpha agonist. Uh, Isoprenol is selected beta agonist. And epinephrine act on everything alpha 1, 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, everything. Okay, what about the distribution of adrenergic receptors? They are, uh, uh, let's talk about, we have the alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and adrenergic receptors, mainly D1 and D2. Alpha 1, okay, so where, where, where they are uh, located, so they are mostly in vascular beds, okay, vascular small muscle. Activation of these receptors will lead to vasoconstriction. On the dilator papillary muscle, they will cause contraction if they are activated, and this will cause pupillary, pupillary dilatation. On the pilometer, do you remember pilometer uh, smooth muscle? Remember, we said activation of the sympathetic neuron. We can see it even in uh, dogs when they are fighting or something. You see, you see there is a hair erection. This is caused by the activation of the alpha 1 receptor on the pilometer smooth muscle, leading to hair erection. On the prostate, this will cause contraction, which lead to ejaculation. Please remember, on the parasympathetic nervous system, activation of the parasympathetic nervous system leads to erection. Uh, on the level of the heart, they increase force of contraction. Okay, now alpha-2. They are mostly post-synaptic neurons, okay? Mostly post-synaptic neurons, okay? They, uh, in the platelets, they cause platelet aggregation, and the adrenergic and cholinergic nerve terminals, they are Presynaptic. Remember, they inhibit neurotransmitters. 
You remember from the previous slide, we said activation of the presynaptic uh, autoreceptor uh, inhibit the further release of the neurotransmitter. And then the vascular smooth muscle also cause contractions to both alpha 1 and alpha 2. They are on the vascular smooth muscle, they will cause vasoconstriction. On the fat cells, that cause inhibition of lipase. Then beta 1, 2, 3. Beta 1, mainly on the heart and gut junk, start the mirror of cells in the kidney. They cause increased both force and rate of contraction of the heart. So positive inotropic, positive coronotropic effect. And this, and also activation of beta 1 increases the renin release, which leads to activation of what's called the RAS, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. Okay. Then beta 2, okay, they are mainly present on the respiratory, uterine, and vascular smooth muscle in the lung, uterus, and vascular smooth muscle, they will cause smooth muscle relaxation. On the skeletal muscle, they will promote potassium uptake and vasodilatation. And uh, human liver activates glycogenolysis, breakdown of glycogen and uh, into, I'm sorry, into glucose. Uh, now beta-3 in two uh, locations on the bladder, they, they relax the bruiser muscle and we have a drug called mirabigrone. This uh, is used for treatment of overactive urinary bladder and uh, uh, urinary incontinence. And in fat cells, they activate lipolysis. We have here beta-3 activates lipolysis, we have alpha-2 inhibit lipolysis. Where it is? Inhibit lipolysis, okay. But the most, I mean, the one that's prevailing will be the beta-3, the final effect will be inhibition activation of lipolysis. Now the uh, dopaminergic uh, receptors, D1 and D2, okay. D1 is present on the smooth muscle, mainly in the kidney. It dilates renal blood vessels. And in the nerve ending, it uh, mainly inhibits the release of dopamine. Okay, so now the regulation of uh, these receptors by agonist and antagonist. Again, let us start with, we have again alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and dopaminergic uh, receptors. So alpha 1, the agonist is uh, phenylephrine, antagonist prazosine, and there is a selective antagonist on the alpha 1A receptor, is tamsulacine, which is commonly used for symptomatic treatment of prostatic enlargement, or also called benign prostatic hyperplasia. Remember the GQ, okay? Uh, this uh, type of receptor, all alpha-1 are GQ-PCR, GQ protein coupled receptors. As we remember, activation of GQ will activate the uh, enzyme phospholipase C, which will degrade or hydrolyze PIP2 into diacylglycerol and IP3. Uh, then the uh, alpha-2 uh, receptors, the agonist is Clonidine antagonist is Duhimbin, and they are GI, all alpha 2, yes, all alpha 2 are GI. We remember again alpha 2 uh, activation inhibits adenylate cyclase, which will lead to increase of the amount of cyclic AMP. Uh, selective agonist on the alpha 2 is oxymetazoline. Uh, on the alpha 2B and alpha 2C is prazosine, is selective antagonist. Uh, on the beta receptors, uh, the uh, agonist is isoproterenol, also called isoprenaline. Isoproterenol, also called isoprenaline. Okay, the antagonist is propranolol, and all of them are GS, means their activation will activate adenylate cyclase, which will convert ATP into cyclic AMP. Uh, selective agonists like beta 1 dobutamine, beta 2 like albuterol and <clears throat> terbutaline. Uh, salbutamol, all of these drugs are used for treatment of bronchial asthma. <coughs> Beta-3, as we said in the previous slide, mirabigron. And the antagonist uh, include propranolol, non-selective, just inhibit everything, beta-1, 2, 3. Uh, Betaxolol uh, inhibits beta-1, and it's only investigational drug. And butoxamine, sorry, betaxolol, I'm sorry again. And so beta-1 is uh, selective beta-1. Uh, antagonists, betaxolol, akinolol, acidutolol, they are selective beta-1 antagonists which are used for treatment of hypertension and tachycardia. Uh, the one I was talking to is about is butoxamine. You don't need to inhibit the beta-2 receptors, right? They are in the lung. You need to not like to suffocate your patient, right? 
So it's this only used for investigational purposes. Uh, the uh, we said G2, GS. Okay, finally, the dopaminergic ones uh, include D1, D1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The agonist on these receptors is dopamine selectively <coughs> phenyl, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> phenyl dopam is selective uh, D1 agonist, used only for hypertension. <coughs> and the uh, G protein type GS, bromo bromocryptin used for treatment of Parkinsonism. It's selective D2 and GI. Okay, and D4, the selective antagonist clozapine used for treatment of schizophrenia. Uh, please pay attention here. The G proteins here are different. Look here, they are similar on the alpha, similar on the alpha 2, similar in alpha in the beta, but here in the uh, dopaminergic uh, uh, receptors, <coughs> starts with uh, GS and ends with GS, and the middle are GI. Easy? So GS activate uh, adenylate cyclase, which will uh, increase the amount of cyclic NP, and uh, uh, GS also, uh, D5 also GS activate uh, adenylate cyclase, whereas GI will inhibit adenylate cyclase. Okay. Uh, okay. Finally, we'll talk about these two receptors in little details. Okay. Suppose now we have epinephrine, which the agonist will activate the G protein couple of the receptors from the GQ type, okay, GQ PCR. So uh, activation of the receptor will activate the GQ cells, okay, the GQ. So it will be converted from the GDP status into GTP status. This will activate phospholipase C, which will degrade PIP2 into diacylglycerol and IP3. We talked about this before, but this is kind of application of the uh, previous uh, diagram. The cell glycerol will convert uh, protein kinase C into the activated form of protein kinase C, which will phosphorylate uh, different proteins. IP3 will uh, release uh, calcium from its stored and activate different kinds of uh, calcium dependent protein kinases, which again will phosphorylate target proteins. Uh, again, this is alpha 1. You remember, alpha 1 is GS, alpha 2 is GI, okay? Uh, alpha 1, I'm sorry, GQ, I'm sorry, alpha 1 is GQ, okay, alpha 1 is GQ. Okay, let us talk now about the uh, alpha 2, alpha 2, alpha 2 is here, okay, alpha 2 is here. Uh, the agonist like epinephrine activate alpha 2 receptor, alpha 2, the G, uh, the G protein is GI. Okay, so activation of the uh, alpha 2 of the GI, I'm sorry, P, uh, GI protein. Uh, will again similarly there will be displacement of GDP for GTP. Now they are in the GTP here, they will inhibit adenylate cyclase. So this will inhibit the conversion of ATP to cyclic NP and inhibit the activation of protein kinase. Uh, the uh, GS activation by uh, epinephrine uh, will activate again the like beta receptors. Beta receptors are all the way they are uh, GSPCR. Okay, so the, their activation will activate the G protein. It will be in the GTP status, which will activate adenylate cyclase, will convert ATP in cyclic NB, activate protein kinase, which will phosphorylate uh, in, uh, different proteins leading to biological effect. I uh, believe, so uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, we already talked about that. So that's it for now. Uh, please again enjoy and they say subhanAllah or alhamdulillah. And talk to you later. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See you.